guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a check-in having to do with health that I felt was worth sharing. Because I realized that among all the changes that I've had to make in my life as a result of my diet and finding out all of the foods that I'm sensitive to and things of that nature, if you guys haven't watched those videos, I will link them below. But to just kind of give you a high level idea, I did a blood test where I found out all of the foods that I'm sensitive to and things like that, one of them was cane sugar. It has been one of the most challenging things in the world to avoid cane sugar, but I realized, guys, for all intents and purposes, with the exception of things that you just cannot avoid, I have not had sugar in two months. That's insane. I had to quit sugar because I am allergic to it. It makes my stomach go poof, like immediately, and it gives me headaches, and it just makes me feel like garbage, and it will really like accentuate a hangover if I've got like sugar in my drink or something like that. The other night, I actually, <laughs> I didn't think about it because I didn't think of how rum is made. I had some like rum that was actually like, you know, brought in from Cuba. My parents brought it back from Cuba, and I tried it, and I was like, this is so good. Oh wait, I'm sick. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a lot harder to avoid than I thought it was going to be, but I wanted to share with you guys kind of what happens when you stop having sugar for this long because it's kind of incredible. The first thing that I noticed, you guys, oh my gosh, sugar kills your energy. I started to notice and even thought to make this video because at two o'clock in my office every single weekday, I'm looking around at everybody. We have standing desks. They go up and down, you know, kind of however you want. I'm standing at my desk and I look around kind of at all the people sitting and everybody's just kind of recovering from lunch, right? You know, you're in that kind of two hour window after everybody's had lunch and everybody's just ready for a nap. And I am next level obnoxious because I have so much energy. Like about 2.15 every day, I feel like I need to take a lap. Like a lap around the block. I just have so stinking much energy it like freaks me out i'm just all day long i'm just i'm in a better mood i'm just so happy you know what i mean and it's just crazy because you just you don't realize how much of your hormones and energy levels and things like that are affected by a little sugar here a little sugar there the sugar that we don't know is in things whatever and that doesn't mean that i'm not having sweet stuff either i'm having coconut sugar i'm having agave i'm having honey and you guys i went and got like a cold pressed green juice because it's just been so beautiful outside it always makes me want to go and get like a green juice because it just seems like so refreshing in the sunshine you know i had one that had just regular apple juice straight from an apple it wasn't you know sweetened apple juice and it had apple juice and kale and cucumber and a bunch of other stuff and i'm sitting there i didn't even finish it i got halfway into it and i was like you guys <laughs> you're gonna need to strap me down or I'm going to need to take a lap because I have so much and I was like bouncing off the walls from apple juice. It had just enough kind of natural fructose or whatever in it that it made me, it gave me just like this wave of amazing energy where I just felt like, I, I don't know, I felt like I could take on the world. It was insane. It was like a shot of caffeine, but it just felt so pure. And I started to realize every single day, like every day when everyone around me hits that lull of the afternoon, I'm like getting my second or third wind. Like I'm just really pumped about it. And it has to do, I noticed it, that it had to do with the sugar because I got that little bit of quote unquote sugar, like natural sugar from that green juice. And I was like, oh my God, it's just that I'm so much more susceptible to getting energized by sugar. And that's why we kind of lean on it. It's so wild how much we kind of lean on that. Like we just kind of crave it. They say that it's, you know, more addictive than cocaine or whatever, but I never really thought about it that way. I think that sugar is one of those things where, you know, it's kind of a nice to have. I still crave sweet things. It doesn't mean I necessarily crave cane sugar, but I crave sweet things. And so I do, I, I like to have my like, uh, anything with honey in it. I'll have like tea with honey in it or something like that. Sometimes I just have um, almond milk, hot almond milk with honey in it and a little bit of cinnamon. That is an amazing way to top off your evening. And you know, I like to have, you know, my Hue brand chocolate. It's like that paleo chocolate that is amazingly delicious. If you can find it in your area, I think they carry it at Whole Foods. It's only sweetened with coconut sugar essentially. And so I do like to still have sweet stuff. And so it's made it a little bit easier to avoid having cane sugar. The other thing that I have noticed is that I'm just kind of a nicer person. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I feel like I don't have this weird sort of like acute craving for sugar. I'm sorry, my dog barking that's just gonna be happening but I don't have that acute craving for sugar that you don't realize kind of puts you on edge a little bit when you it's just kind of like when you're hungry or when you're thirsty when you go to the bathroom it's any kind of like body need when your brain starts to kind of prioritize that it makes it harder for you to be present in conversations and things like that so I found that quitting sugar 
has made me more present in conversations, it's made me more upbeat, able to handle my thoughts, it's made me just kind of a nicer person. And that kind of dovetails right in with your mindfulness. So I, if you're new to my channel, you might not know this, but I'm a big proponent of practicing mindfulness. I think that it is just really healthy to kind of consciously, continuously make space in your brain so that you can conserve energy, so that you can be a more present human being. I have a whole series on it back in December. So I did a 12 part series on mindfulness. And we're gonna revisit some of those on my channel going forward because I have gotten some very specific requests from people to kind of go back to talking about that kind of stuff. Like apparently you guys miss it. So I really, I appreciate knowing that. We will get back into that. But just high level, I have found that cutting sugar out of my diet has helped me be more mindful because I'm not distracted by some kind of strange like withdrawal or body craving or anything like that. Plus, my energy levels are so much more full all the time that I feel like if I'm in traffic and I get like somebody cuts me off or pisses me off, I'm just way more apt to just take a deep breath. Or if something about the wedding isn't going right, you know, we just found out that our wedding is also the same weekend as another big event in Austin and we thought that we had thought through all of that and everything like that and I just was able to kind of like have a moment where I was like this sucks and then take a deep breath and like come back from it and I found that in the past two months of me kind of going back to therapy, quitting sugar, just kind of making a lot of positive changes in my life, it's made so much room in my brain. So if you find that you are overwhelmed by things in your life and you're like, well, how am I supposed to find time for mindfulness in the middle of all this other stuff? Like, it might be what you're putting in your body. I'm not telling you to go quit sugar because I definitely think that I wouldn't have necessarily found a really good reason on my own to quit sugar if it hadn't been something that came up on a blood test that said that I was sensitive to it. But I think you can just cut back on sugar, you know what I mean? And it would still make a difference in your life. Another thing that I've noticed, it hasn't necessarily helped with my acne. I know that that's something that's kind of commonly thrown around as a benefit of quitting sugar is that your skin will clear up. My skin has not cleared up, okay? I have some very strong negative juju working on my skin. I've got acne, I've got psoriasis, I've got, you know, everything under the sun, and I'm working right now on getting that back on the rails for my wedding and everything like that, but I did not experience that from quitting sugar. I did not experience just this, like, <laughs> amazing new skin feeling. I did, however, experience, like, with the energy, my metabolism getting better. I found that, you know, I would eat when I was hungry, I would stop when I was full, and I just felt like my metabolism didn't have as many highs and lows, you know what I mean? It was just kind of this nice constant, I think that has to do with, you know, your glycemic index and all of that. I'm not a scientist, but I did definitely notice that my energy levels affected my body and, like, how I felt when I exercised, how I felt when I ate, and just sort of the, the general, like, consistentness, consistency of my metabolism. And also, holistically, part of that is my immune system. I have been around so much garbage lately. I've been traveling, I've traveled twice in the last month, and you know, that opens you up to some, you know, potentially crappy stuff. But I've managed to stay well and generally healthy, with the exception of seasonal allergies. I don't even want to talk about that, that's a whole other thing. But I've managed to really stay very healthy and wake up feeling really clear and alert. I think it has a lot to do, you know, with like the peaks and the valleys like I was talking about, where what you're doing is you're just kind of like surging a lot of stuff into your body all at once when you have sugar. We all know that feeling, that really nice sugar high. But when you take that out, you end up with this really nice kind of altogether higher level of energy and level of existence and your body really thanks you for it. And finally, the biggest thing that I have noticed is that my sleep is so much better. I was having a lot of sleep trouble around the holidays and it doesn't occur to you that, you know, we eat so many sweets around the holidays and it was before I knew that that was what the part of the problem was. And I just found that I had this really disrupted sleep, whether I drank alcohol or not, whether I got exercise that day or not, I could do all of the right things and still, you know, eat sugar. And I found that I always woke up in the night. I found that I didn't wake up feeling particularly rested. And so I lately have just found that I fall asleep really easily, <laughs> probably because I have so much energy and I go and I exercise after work every day. And then that makes me like what I call, you know, summer camp tired, where it doesn't matter what surface you're sleeping on, you will just fall asleep there and it will be the greatest surface to sleep on of your life, even if it's a crappy foam bed, like you have at summer camp because you're just so honest to God tired and it's like the best feeling ever. So I get to go and just expend that energy and I feel so much appreciation. I go and I run and it's like a beautiful sunny day and I'll just stop 
and I'll just like take a second to look at the sky. I just feel like I'm not in as much of a hurry. I don't know if that's because of sugar or just because of the mindfulness and just having kind of like space in my brain, but it is the biggest change that I've made in my life lately. The other stuff that I've cut out of my diet, yes, <laughs> there is a big convenience factor of not feeling sick all the time, but there are a lot of things that I can't avoid all the time. You know, there's onions and everything, there's paprika and everything, there's often, you know, orange or tapioca or things that I just don't know are in things, especially traveling, it gets really hard, but I can be very conscious of not having cane sugar. And I find that, you know what we talk about on my channel, like you're either snowballing in one direction or snowballing in the other direction in like a good way or a bad way. I feel like taking sugar out of my diet has been one of those things where for my mindfulness practice, for my, my body, and of course when your body looks better, your brain feels better, you know what I mean? You know when you're kind of going off the rails and you're not taking care of yourself, it starts to affect every part of your life. So I mean, there's just something to be said for it. I haven't actually lost any weight as a result of it because I don't think I was eating that much sugar to begin with. And even when I was eating sugar, I wasn't eating like, cake you know it was like a bite here or a bite there a piece of chocolate or something like that just to kind of like satisfy that craving so i i didn't experience any weight loss but i think that if you are kind of like mainlining margaritas every day you'll probably experience some weight loss if you stop eating sugar but the main thing that i've noticed is that it's just brought me closer to all of my general goals. So if we're talking about the chakras, right? We're talking about like your, your root chakra, it's bringing me much closer to my, my healthful self. It's making me a much more functional human being with sleep and things like that. But it's also helping with like esteem goals. It's helping me be more present in my relationship. It's helping me have more room in my brain in order to kind of like achieve my like higher learning sort of third eye kind of needs in my life and I just feel like it's been such a positive change that I know this is kind of a weird video right I'm just talking about not eating sugar but I just want to advocate for it I think that even if you're not sensitive to it like necessarily you're probably still kind of sensitive to it it doesn't matter whether your body actually rejects it like mine does you're still going to experience some really great benefits from cutting it out and there are so many other options. Granted, <laughs> my friend who's making my wedding cake wants to kill me. <laughs> She's like, uh, so you can't have sugar, you can't have fake sugar, and you can't have tapioca. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, so you might be getting a fruit tray. <laughs> I'll try and make it look as much like a cake as possible, but <laughs> you're lucky that I love you. Um, so it's not easy necessarily, but I will say, I don't think you necessarily have to cut it out completely. I don't know. I'm kind of an all or nothing sort of person because <laughs> my body has made it that way, but I am kind of that way about everything. But if you are kind of the person who can just sort of like dial the notch back, I think you will still experience really good benefits from cutting a lot of cane sugar out of your diet. I do think that it is kind of, I'm going to get kind of conspiracy theory on you here. It's the opiate of the masses, right? The sugar bureau has an addictive substance that sells itself and they make sure that they can partner with companies to get it injected into everything. If you're drinking soda, quit drinking soda. Soda is evil. But if you're, even if you're having bread, like that's the problem is if, even if I have gluten-free bread, most companies use sugar to bloom yeast. You can use anything sweet to bloom yeast. You can use honey, but most use cane sugar and it is because you know, the sugar bureau is out there doing its darndest to keep selling its product. And I kind of like sticking it to the man in a certain way, just kind of stepping back. And there's just a certain level of enlightenment from not going along with that. It's a really nice feeling. And the benefits that I have enjoyed as a result of this obligatory cutting out of sugar for the last two months, I just, I love it. I know I'm obnoxious at work because I have so much energy, but I would rather be the obnoxious girl at work who's just like, seems to be so youthful, like a little kid, than being aged by sugar and feeling like garbage all the time. So guys, I know this isn't one of my normal videos, but at the same time, the feedback that I get from you guys most of the time is not that you want a certain type of video, it's that you kind of just want to know what I think about things. And I have kind of a different twist on stuff a lot of times, and so I wanted to share this with you guys because it's something that's been very upfront and topical in my life. It's been making a really big difference in just my day to day. Yesterday I flew in from Florida and today is Sunday. Normally I have Saturday and Sunday to film five videos. And today I'm doing all five in one day and a video came out this morning. I filmed six last week so that you guys could have an April Fool's video. I hope that you guys liked that. So the proof is in the sugarless pudding. Also aspartame is terrifying. I'm allergic to it, but I just think that NutraSweet is, is scary stuff anyway. So try and stick to the natural sugars, not just you know, going with sweet and low, 
to each her own, but I, that's just my personal recommendation. I just don't think you can trick your body. I don't think you can cheat your body. The things that you put in your body, your body knows. It doesn't matter what you tell your brain before you put it in your mouth, your body knows that it's not the right thing and it's not gonna like it. And even if you don't have as strong and loud and clear of like sirens as my body does, because my body, <laughs> that is probably the biggest thing. <laughs> my body has the loudest, alarm system ever. I break out with psoriasis, my face breaks out, I get like horribly, I get terrible hangovers or whatever. talk with my hands, I get terrible headaches and things like that. Like my body tells me loud and clear when something is wrong and so that is why I've even come to understand these things about myself. But hopefully my suffering can help impart some help for you guys, if you guys are feeling just this low nastiness and you're like, what am I doing wrong? Just try cutting sugar out, see what happens. It might make a huge difference in your lives. And I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's ever done this. So guys, I'm sure some of you guys are watching this right now and you're like, yes, girl. And here are all the other things that happen if you go six months or a year without having sugar or whatever. Like, I would love to hear that in the comments because I just think it's a really healthy step. If you're looking for a way to really take a good step forward in your life. You know what I mean? Make a, a punctuated decision, like the, the before and after, like I'm gonna make a change, I'm gonna be a healthier person. You don't have to like go, you know, raw vegan or just start working out every single day. Just try cutting sugar out. I guarantee you, you will see such a positive change in your life that will make other things seem so much more possible. So guys, if you enjoyed this weird little video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Also. Hit the bell if you want to get my notifications because Google won't tell you anymore. They just won't tell you anymore. If you didn't click the bell, they're not going to tell you I put a video out. So, <sighs> whatever. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you. I hope you're having a fantastic week. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.